Bora very much for being here with us at the very first edition of the Express Festival. So I would like to ask you, when did you decide that you want to be an astronaut? I think it was never really a decision. When I was a kid, I wanted to go to space, not being an astronaut per se, but I wanted to go to space to feel what it is to be in space, not thinking as a job, but just uh, for the weekends or holidays. Then I grew up uh, as a teenager, I wanted to be an architect, a medical doctor, but I was always fascinated by space. And when uh, came the time for my college and university uh, level studies, I wanted to be involved in space exploration, designing space probes, satellites, space telescopes, with right away the decision that as soon as there would be a call for candidates to, to be astronauts, I would apply, just to test the experience of being a candidate. But at the end, I was selected. So you always say that astronauts are beyond all men and women, normal people. So can you tell us how you balance between your personal life and your career? You know, I, I've been 10 years uh, involved in the 14th group of NASA astronauts living in Houston. And uh, normal life, I was going back in the evening, uh, meeting my family, because my space flights were short on the space shuttle, and we don't travel too much. And for my kids who were born there, I was just doing a normal life. It's just when I came back to France, they realized that there was no so many astros around in our neighborhood. I mean, none. I think space exploration will, uh, like everything in life, will have up and downs, but will never stop because I think it is inscribed in our genes, uh, the human genes, to explore uh, with this quest of knowledge that animates us, that uh, makes humans go to where they have never been before, like the, the motto of Captain Kirk in Star Trek, our mission to boldly go where no one has gone before. As far as access to space to non-professionals, I think it will remain limited. It will grow, but uh, not as big as uh, public transportation, because going to space requires a lot of energy, which makes the business risky, I mean the activity risky. And as long as it is risky, and a risky activity, and expensive, we cannot think that it can open to everybody. Uh, and also, not everybody wants to take the risk to go to space. But it's a good mean to talk about space because even a tourist that pays $200,000 for five minutes in space will talk to their family, to their neighbors, to their friends, and that will propagate promotion of space in general. They will, when you are in space, even as a non professional, like it has happened a few times, you realize. It's an environment that is magic for research, to, for finding new things, for having a new look at the Earth, at your own species, at humankind. And these are good messages that those people can uh, transfer when they come back on Earth. Like Guy La Liberté, the founder of the Cirque du Soleil, he produced a marvelous book, Gaia, about the Earth uh, view from space. And this is what we need. We need to communicate more about space and that's not easy because space you cannot touch you cannot feel you cannot smell it it is far distance you know for, for everybody as opposed to a car if you're a fan of a car you go in a festival of automobile and you touch the car you you smell the car but how can you make space known to non-experts uh, they not everybody attend a launch or see a satellite but by experiencing space by yourself for a few minutes in parabolic flight or suborbital flights, you can start being able to talk about space to people around you, and that's good for, for the future of space activities in general, public, commercial, or research. What would you say to young explorers? How would you inspire young people to pursue their passion the way you did? I think uh, when you are an explorer, whatever kind of explorer, I mean, of the unknown, whether it's uh, human body, the brain, or the ocean, or mountains, or Antarctica, or space, you have to, um, to refrain this uh, shyness to expose your emotions, you know. When you express how you are moved uh, in your life, uh, 
uh, you feel uh, you are a bit ridiculous. I mean, some people, many astros, never mention their emotions. They never say, I cry when I watch the earth. And I think explorers are expected to express their emotions. They are pioneers, they are witnesses of new worlds. And the general public expects from explorers to give back to them their experience. The most frequent answer as to astronauts is how is it is to be, to, to be in space? It is not uh, what is your work or uh, is it expensive or uh, uh, it is useless. No, it's if myself, I was in space in your place, you're the astronauts, what would my body tell me? What would I feel? So my role is to tell the people in space you would feel like this, you will hear this, you will you would cry like this. This is what they expect. So explorers must report to others about their extreme experience. Thank you very much for this interview and I enjoyed the rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you very much.